Hi, it's Matt again. Um, just want to talk today about driving in the Philippines. Um, it's one of those things where if you're very confident driving, uh, I recommend it. But if you're a person that doesn't really watch what's going on in the road and are used to following rules, um, A, you're going to find it difficult, but also B, you're very likely to have an accident here. Um, I know that the first year here I had about five very minor collisions um, on a scooter. Um, some, of the, some of the things that go on here is just phenomenal. Uh, the prime example of something going wrong is in a power cut. Uh, I was driving in the neighborhood here um, on the way home and I was met by a vehicle on the wrong, a motorbike on the wrong side of the road with no lights on um, that actually ended up with my bike going down so I didn't actually run straight into them head on because I didn't see them until they are right on me um, because I was actually doing a U-turn at the time. That stuff is normal. Um, when, when I took a trip down to Negros um, there must have been at least 20 dogs that are just randomly walking or asleep in the road. Um, there's what they call a pedal cab here, which is uh, a BMX with a passenger seat to the side. Those don't have lights at all, and sometimes you'll see them on their way home um, on roads which can be quite fast. You're like literally. 15 feet before you can see them um, because they're totally dark, totally dark. There's no street lighting. Um, this is all outside the city, by the way, uh, because most of the uh, most of the city does not allow uh, pedal cabs to operate. There's also horse and carts running around in the city, but there's very few of them, so I can't really comment on them. The next thing is the passenger jeepneys. They generally don't have many working lights, either front or back. Um, it's actually improved a little bit, but I still wouldn't trust any of them if I was anywhere near them, um, because if you assume the lights are working, you're very likely to have an uh, emergency break uh, when you realize they don't have any working. They also don't indicate, and they do this thing where if you imagine you've got two lanes of traffic, uh, we'll go in the camera. Uh, so you've got your two lanes of traffic. So this, a passenger at the side of the road, so what they'll do is they'll actually go like that and block both lanes of traffic. This is to stop the bus behind them getting in front and at the risk of um, missing out on a passenger further up the road. So generally they'll try and block the road for their own convenience and to hell with everybody else. Um, that hasn't changed, it, it, and it, if anything, there seems to be more jeepneys on the road. Um, I mean, the positive side of that is if you're using public transport, there's always a bus coming along. It's like literally, um, you can look up one way up the road and you can see the next one uh, coming along um, the other way. It's the continuous. Uh, when you get into the towns, you can have 11 um, all like congesting up the, the town centre because they'll stop until they're full, they're just, they're just a pain in the backside most of the time. Um, the other thing with that, because they don't indicate, it can be a problem. Um, because A, most of the time the indicators don't work, but B, when they get to their end of the route, it doesn't mean they have a convenient way to turn around. What they do is they U-turn in the road. Now what they'll generally do is just pull across, because because of the the vehicle's not being designed for what they're used for. Because they, these are like um, little mini pickups, you know, little Suzuki ones, which are, in the UK, we use them for milk flows. They extend the back out and convert them into the, the jeepneys. Now, what happens then is when you turn it round, you have to go from the right lane. Uh, we, we drive on the right-hand side of the road here. So you go from the far right, right away across all four lanes to turn around because you can't turn around properly if you just did a, um, a short turn. In the same way, they may not look um, 
out of their window at you, what, the, what they'll sometimes do is just edge out and hope for the best. They'll, you know, move out slowly. Move out slowly is the way many things happen here on the road. Um, I've noticed the number of motorbikes on the wrong side of the road um, coming up the inside lane has heavily increased in the last two years. It's ridiculous. Um, there's no real enforcement going on, which is pretty bad to be honest. Um, I would find them like a pound or something. <laughs> they, would soon, they would soon get the message that riding on the wrong side of the road isn't really the way to go just because they're too lazy um, to cross the road to come up. Because most of the time what they're doing is they might only want the next junction along, but rather than going out onto the road, down a little bit and then back across, they'll just go up the wrong side of the road. Um, the other one is that they're they're like um, taxis. There's just a stack of them. Um, they use them as passenger vehicles for the mountains because they, it's more rugged and uh, the buses don't run there. So you'll get a lot of them congest up the corners, um, complete pain in the backside, and like most things, it's over congested with the number of people doing it. Because um, you might only need like 10 or 15 people, but what you'll actually get is about 40. Um, they'll just sit on the backside all day waiting for a passenger to come along. Um, not really a problem for me because I don't use them, but they're, when you try to turn into a, a corner with a larger vehicle, they're, they're just like hoarding up the corner for, you know, when you try to turn in and cause congestion where there shouldn't really be any. It's, uh, but not really a big problem. It's just something you get used to and they don't move out of the way if you're edging forward with your 4x4 or something. It's not, they're not going to sit there and argue with you because they, they shouldn't be there. Um, they're not licensed, they're not legal. Um, and a lot of them don't even have a driving license. They're, a lot of them are kids, um, you know, teenagers. But not a negative thing, because if you want cheap transport and want to, don't want to walk home, then you may actually need one. Um, the, other, the other ones they have is the trikes, which are uh, a motorbike with a sidecar, which can take, I've seen at least six people on one, um, but realistically it should be taking about three to four people, but I've seen six and then people hanging on the edge of that and sitting on the back of the driver. Um, Probably the maximum of about 10 or 12 people on one, and you know that the push started to get it going because it couldn't do a stop, it couldn't do a stand start. Um, but those, you'll see the little arms come out when they're gonna gonna turn out. You can't really do it from this angle, actually. They just do this. They're like imagine imagine you're I'm on the back of a motorbike. We're gonna turn around. I'm just gonna stick my arm out and just flap it. We're turning regardless of what you're doing behind us, we're telling you we're turning. And that's what they do. Um, they could be on the inside lane, you're traveling at like 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, and they have only just picked a passenger up, and a little arm will come out and say, well, we're going to go the other way, and they'll just cross right in front of everybody. Now, those vehicles I've seen in more crashes than anything else, um, primarily because when they head where we are, we head south, the south road is extremely fast. Now, when I say extremely fast, it doesn't mean you should be going fast on it. I mean things like buses are doing about 60 miles an hour plus. Um, prime example when it goes wrong is when the uh, a bus here hit a truck head on outside the hospital uh, in Minglanilia, between Minglanilia and Naga, and people were dropping dead um, due to their injuries. It's normal here, it's acceptable, it must be acceptable because they don't do anything about it. Um, same with the buses that fall off the cliffs going too fast. It's acceptable, it's been ongoing. Every, every few months you'll read of a, a bus falling off something uh, or running into something. Nobody seems to care. Um, it's in the news, you get the shock horror, but reality is it will happen again tomorrow because no, there's no changes ever happening. Nobody actually sits there and goes, okay, well, we need seatbelts. Um, maybe we need a bus that um, doesn't need just 
spot welding together. It, it should actually be a solid structure. But what do I know? Um, you can bring Western ideals into a, um, an Eastern country, especially one where you find that the cost of transportation would it justify buying real buses? I don't know, and I haven't done uh, I don't haven't done an analysis on it, but I do know the cost of living here is extremely cheap. When I say living, sorry, cost of dying, <laughs> the cost of life. Um, it's extremely cheap. It, it's often not got a real value to it. Um, you can see that in a lot of the natural disasters. I'm not going to go on about that because we're, we're going with the transportation. So the buses, if you are going to use them, be aware that they go extremely fast outside the cities. And when I say extremely fast, it, it's more to do with the fact they're in the middle of the road most of the time, beeping their horn, pushing through the traffic really aggressively, and this is how you end up with a guy flapping his arm and turning on his little trike, getting hit by the bus that can't slow down because it's got no brakes. Um, can take that as an exaggeration, no brakes, but <laughs> it's up to you. A famous Philippine saying, it's up to you. <laughs> um, the other thing with the buses, if you're driving, Try and avoid being anywhere near them. Um, even in the cities or, you know, in the rural areas, it, especially if you're on open road, because I nearly ended up down the edge of a cliff because of a bus just coming up behind me when another bus was coming the other way on the wrong side of the road overtaking somebody, because this bus on my side of the road has no nowhere to go. So what he does is pushes towards the curb where I'm sat on the <laughs> little scooter um, with the edge of the tarmac just looking down at cliff's edge. Um, I had the width of the, the scooter, literally. If it, if it hit something or gone slightly out, I would have ended up dead. You know, I did. I'm sure they wouldn't have stopped. <laughs> but you get used to it. You've got to laugh some of this stuff off. You know, it may sound a bit cynical, but it's the way things are here. Um, I was talking to somebody over about three or four months ago that had accidentally run somebody over and they were joking that they should have killed them um, because they've been paying the medical fees for, for the last few months. Now, that has some humor to it, but I've also heard that um, some of the bus companies do encourage um, a one-off payment rather than medical bills. Can't confirm it, but if you ask anybody, generally that's what they would say. Um, so that's the buses. Um, if you're in a car or a motorbike and there's one coming up beside you, let it go past. Don't try and keep up with the stupid thing because they'll. The problem is they they want they want to race. They're like little kids. Um, what do you call um, boy racer type? Uh, aggressive driving, messing around, where they should actually be compliant and safe, but they're they're not um, a good mode of transport. Uh, it's it's not. You don't have to take my word for it, by the way. Just look up the bus crashes, like bus crash Philippines, and you'll see the average bus seems to have at least 20 people killed in it. Um, that is a sign of vehicles going too fast and when they fall off a cliff, fall off a expressway in the middle of Manila, uh, that's a sign of a vehicle that A, doesn't have a competent driver, but B, has obviously got other issues with it. Um, normally the brakes, normally the fact they, they don't know how to use the gearbox properly. Um, general stuff that could be fixed very conveniently, um, easily, but just doesn't happen. I'm not gonna change it, I'm not interested. Um, I'm, this isn't my country to fix. Um, what else could I say on that? The transportation. Um, driving at night is notoriously dangerous. Um, I generally don't mind driving at night if it's uh, an area that I know. Um, 
I'll give you I'll give you an example. I went to a basketball match and we come back about maybe eleven o'clock at night, midnight. Now the big problem in the when you get out of the city is a lot of time there's no street lighting. And we were up over the mountains and miles away. So when we come back, one of the things I hadn't noticed was on the because on the way there everything was fine, but on the way back some of the road was actually missing. Now I come around this corner and was on a, um, a tarmac straight, and literally, if you imagine the, the they scraped the, the the road away to resurface it, and it was down to hardcore, just the rock where you know they're either going to re-tarmac it or re-concrete, do something with it. So you've just got the the um, the hardcore, but also it's about six to eight inch drop. It's hard to say. It's about it's about this sort of distance between this is the existing road and this is the hard part. So I'm coming along the road on uh, this section to jump <laughs> jump into um, the abyss uh, because the sign that says warning roadworks, which was a homemade um, homemade sign with a piece of plywood and a bit of pain was actually where the road actually stopped. <laughs> I was doing 70 miles an hour at the time with my... Okay, I accidentally pressed the space bar and stopped the video there um, in my sight. Uh, but yeah, the, you can imagine the shock horror of the, the road disappearing and you can't see exactly where the road's going um, because you get that sudden drop but the, the light isn't... Uh, <laughs> the light isn't, it has nothing to view because there is no white line down the middle of the road. There's no tarmac, there's just rubble and the the um, the drop at the side. Um, just one of those things that happens here. A few times I've been, I've had some pretty close near misses. Um, I don't think my father-in-law even noticed at the time because he was like set up the back. But we went through that and there was no problem. But generally at that time of night, you get the drunks walking in the middle of the road. You get people that run out into the street without looking. Um, you get the, tri the tricycles with no lights. You get the pedal cabs with no lights. You get buses and stuff that have got no lights that work. Um, You'll get trucks going through um, that might not see you too easily. Um, at that time of night, they're going pretty fast, so you've got to be careful. Um, the, ro the roads are dimly lit or don't have lights at all. Um, bear in mind, I'm talking about areas that aren't built up. If you're in Cebu City, it's like a normal Western, uh, normal westernized city, but without people adhering to most of the driving rules. Um, and some big potholes here and there. Uh, but so yeah, seagull generally is not really a problem. You just get the you just get frustrated with the congestion um, and just the minor things like motorbikes finding any space to go up the road. Whether there's one available or not, they'll find a route, um, head up the wrong side of the road, uh, it's fine, it's normal. <laughs> um, but yeah, drive me a night. Don't recommend it if you're not um, a skilled driver. Also, if you've got poor eyesight, because you could fall off the road. Um, but daytime, uh, biggest risk I've had is probably armored trucks, because I go quite quick, but when you head out of the cities, you'll find the armored trucks generally sit in the middle of the road, and they won't move over. Um, and even if they are on your, you know, if they're on your side of the road heading in the same direction, they may still edge you a bit just to give themselves some more room because they're trying to overtake what they shouldn't do and things like that. But buses do it, trucks do it. And generally, the bigger the vehicle, the more aggressive the driver. Um, except for new 4x4s, we seem to have a lot of aggressive drivers. Um, I think it's a bit of Tin God syndrome on those. Though. Um, don't expect traffic lights to be working. 
and don't expect them to make sense. Some of the roads don't make sense. Um, the only way to explain it is you could see the road straight in front of you, but they might get you to do, um, you know, imagine the road going straight down. Uh, you can see that bit there you need to get to, but I'm actually, I mean, this is a prime, prime example um, near the Fort San Pedro. You can't get to the straight bit. You have to go right. Uh, I'm going to go back. You've got to go right and then U turn and then go up and then right. You can see there's a, actually a gap in the middle. Um, you could go straight, but you, they just don't. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's completely illogical from. I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. And there's a lot of stuff like that where they have like there might be some shanties or something in the middle of the road, so you end up doing an S-type maneuver uh, where the roads have sort of weaved in and out because of, I don't know. It, it, like I said, some of this stuff doesn't make any sense. Obviously, it does here because um, obviously I'm taking it from a Western perspective where things like that. You would actually question why it was like that in the first place, but here uh, could have a completely different perspective. Like, well, that's John's house. Yeah, but it's in the middle of the road. Different perspective. Um, don't know. <laughs> don't know is my answer. Um, what else to say about driving on the roads here? Traffic enforcers in the cities now. Um, they, they generally come out at night um, in peak hours to try and help with the flow of traffic. Um, do they or not? I don't know. I don't think they improve it, but what do I know? I'm not a traffic enforcer. But what I would say is you may get hassle off them for not having a helmet. Uh, when I first come here, Hardly anybody wore a helmet, um, but in the last couple of years, they've started enforcing it, and they've started making you have these little plastic, uh, sorry, little stickers on your helmet. What it symbolizes, I don't know, because most of the helmets here are cheap Chinese junk. They're not like shoey helmets or something, um, so I don't know what it actually symbolizes. Um, maybe that it doesn't have a crack, something stupidly simple. Um, it's a step in the right direction, though. Um, because prior to that, nobody really wore a helmet, especially in the provinces. But I see more and more people wearing a helmet. I don't like wearing one. Um, I do for the city because I have no choice, but also because of the smog and stuff. I can have these little panda eyes, you know, with so much soot and stuff on the road. Um, so I do wear a helmet there, but if I'm up in the mountains, I don't think anybody does, and I prefer to see what I'm, what's around me, um, not just for the motorbiking, but also taking photos. I'm a strong believer in the people having freedom of choice on stupidity, um, as long as it's not bothering somebody else, uh, you know, like that. If I don't want to wear a helmet, that's up to me, because let's face it, the chances of I mean, hitting another vehicle in the mountains is extremely slim, but also if I fell off, it's going to be about a, about a 20 foot drop. It's not going to be um, anything else. You know, I don't think it's going to make that much difference. Not a topic I want. To, I wouldn't like comments on. I really don't have an interest in it. It's just a personal choice. Um, what else could I say about the driving? Cyclists are appearing a lot more in the city and also rurally. Um, what I mean is like the Tour de France type driver uh, cyclists. So that's a growing phenomenon and it's it's something that, that I'm good I'm happy to see actually happening. Um, no complaints from me for people actually uh, enjoying the the roads on and getting fit at the same time. Whether the smog actually causes cancer, if it's more likely to be a problem, I don't know. Uh, but the main thing for me is it's an improvement. Um, it is much better to have cyclists on the road than big 4x4s and other vehicles. Um, 
haven't missed any of the vehicles that we should be wary of. Um, what about the driving etiquette? Driving etiquette is basically edging. Um, if you have a car, don't sit there and expect people to let you out. It's, what you do is you edge your way out. Um, you push and generally just make a uh, make an aggressive choice. Um, for example, if somebody, because you'll get this, jeepneys stop to pick passengers up. If they do, take the advantage and pull out in front of them. Um, if they're going to turn left or whatever, they're now blocked. So that's one lane down, and you'll have to get across the next one. I wouldn't say in the UK you probably go. You can't do that because you can't see behind the bus. Um, here. It's normal to do it, and it, once people see you're edging forward, um, they then start stopping to let you out because they're a bit wary that you're just going to pull out and they're going to run straight into you. Um, and then it goes for most vehicles. Motorbikes will just pull out from the inside lane, uh, from from the junction. You know, they're just coming in off a junction into the main road. They may not even look round. They'll just continue on the inside lane as if like. Nobody else is on the road. Um, tricycles do that, um, but generally, that I think that we've covered nearly everything you should be aware of. Um, smog is a big problem, and I recommend getting air conditioning, closed windows if you're getting a car. Um, get some good filters on your aircon, um, but. It's not really, like I said, for me it's not really an issue because I don't spend too much time in the city. I don't like the city. Um, I'm a person who likes to be left alone. Uh, not in a negative way, but it, what I mean is like, I don't really want to go into the city unless it's for a nice restaurant or something. I'm not one that wants to live in a condo or that style of life. I like the countryside and uh, moving around a bit. Um, I don't like heavy traffic or shopping malls isn't my forte. I'm more into ordering online and enjoying life um, moving around here. So um, I think that's pretty much on transportation. Uh, thanks for listening.